All right, welcome to everybody. A fun video here today at Blue Glow Electronics. And I'm going to be honest with you here in the first 10 seconds of, of this video and go ahead and tell you that this is somewhat of a paid advertisement, um, but it's also going to be a realistic one. So uh, more on that as we go into the video. But as you can see here, these are the various um, either wire cutters, wire snippers, or wire strippers, or maybe you call them other things that I have and that I use on my bench on a regular basis. And here's the reality. Each and every one of these has a certain special purpose, maybe that they serve, serve and maybe they do that purpose a little bit better than any of the others. Um, thus, I wouldn't have them on my bench if they didn't. But in general, I'm going to talk about the quality of them as a whole and, uh, and how they kind of do their job at the end of the day, okay? So let's start off with some some bigger stuff here, okay? So this is an old pair of Klein um, lineman tool type cutters. You can see daylight through these. They're never going to be precision, but these are great for cutting big stuff, okay? Um, and I use them from time to time, but never going to use this to work on something like a Macintosh piece of equipment, okay? You just won't see that. Um, so they serve their purpose. Similarly, this would be an equivalent to this, these being Klein brand. These are Cobalt brand, which is the uh, Lowe's hardware name brand. But if you flip them over here, what does it say? Right here stamped on it, made in China. Uh, these, these, these have been around, these were my father's. Um, they've probably been in his toolbox for 40 or 50 years. They've now been in mine. These won't make it that long. The rubber will rot off of them. Uh, they won't hold up, um, not the same quality of tools here. So we'll get those out of the way, okay? Then up next, here's another pair of Klein tools that I've had for ages. Um, great here for, these even have little bolt cutoffs. You screw your little um, bolt in there, it'll snip them off. Uh, got insulation crimpers on the back end and you've got some wire strippers of here. And believe it or not, I have I've stopped using these um, even though they're great quality. And I actually like these little green leaves with the uh, picked up at Lowe's Hardware years ago. Um, they're made for stripping copper wire, and they've also got a couple little screw cutters here, but um, and a big set of cutters right here. But I use them all the time for stripping wire um, as I'm working on gear. And I just like the feel of these, and the spring-loaded helps out on them. I like the locking element of this. Um, good little Good little wire strippers. Um, you know, as we move further forward into other wire strippers here, we've got these, uh, looks like these are GB Electronics. Nothing wrong with these. I do find this thing here to be a total pain in the tail. You're supposed to turn it to 16 gauge wire. The problem is this thing spins freely, so it never really lands right there on the spot. Um, and you end up uh, cutting your wire in half accidentally. Um, so I usually don't even like to use that. As a matter of fact, I've got another pair here. Um, that I didn't have in the circle that are just like those that have this little sliding lock thing, but the the, the springs are long gone on these. Um, nothing wrong with these for wire strippers, um, and, and every once in a while I use them, especially if I'm outside doing automotive type work. But there again, these are stamped metal. There's nothing heavy duty or fancy about them, and um, they, they kind of serve their purpose. But um, let's dive into my favorite topic here and what I use all the time, and these are wire cutters or wire snippers, okay, or clippers. You'll see them called sometimes. Um, over here we've got the Exolite. Um, these are very common. These are the 175Ms used all around the world by many, many, many uh, manufacturing facilities. And um, you actually see these a lot on the used market. As a matter of fact, at Hamfest, I'll see boxes of them. They're usually two or three dollars a pair. And what's happened is, at some point in time, because they are stamped metal, they're not a hardened or forged steel. What'll happen right here is you'll get a ding in them. Somebody will cut something that's not, you know, just copper, and you'll have a divot here in the blade. And somebody will take these and hold them together and hold them onto a grinder and they'll grind them down till hopefully they uh, kind of match up. But the reality is they're never the same. Um, matter of fact, this pair, they cut well, both edges are straight. The problem is that they're offset a little bit. One blade is a little bit higher than the other, so I don't get a perfect cut on these, but I still use them from time to time. This is an older pair of the exact same thing. 
Um, these stay in my uh, automotive tool kit, um, and I use them outside. They, um, they've lost their little retain cutting retainer up here on them. As you can see, they've certainly got their uh, share of grease over the years. But there again, stamp metal. This one's got some divots from cutting things on automotive um, that wasn't maybe maybe perfectly copper or whatnot. Um, then here's a set called Pros Kit, and um, doesn't say a lot about them other than cut copper wire, maximum 0.8 millimeters. These were actually a fairly decent pair of cutting tools. They're again stamped metal with a rivet on them here that kind of pinches these together and as, I don't know if you can see it or not it's kind of hard to tell here but on the end they don't close completely they do back here but not at the end what's happened is as I was snipping things over time the ends got bent out on them and, and they're not perfect so there again these don't kind of last forever this is a, a um, Avon AVN Nip Tech cutter from Taiwan um, nice spring on them even though these are um, kind of a stamped steel, they're thicker and they're kind of ground down, so you've got some width to them there. Still, again, a pressed rivet here and a spring. Um, I imagine these would do good for a while at some point, though, because they're not a hardened metal. They're kind of soft. You'll end up with some divots here. Um, up next, one of my favorite pairs, and I would never, I would never say anything about, bad about these. These are Lindstrom. Uh, made in Sweden, and uh, this is the 8148, and made for 0.01 to 0 0.08 millimeter copper wire. They are a hardened steel. They do have a screw type connection here. These things cut quite well, and I like them a lot, and I've used them a lot. So good quality stuff right here. These are some Excelite, Exceltas, excuse me, um, ESD safe. And I've picked these up at a ham, at ham fest near me. A guy has these. Um, these are some long nose, and these are just some rounded nose. And they do a great job of cutting, and I, and I actually think they're really good quality. They seem to be um, not stamped in any way, some type of forged or cast metal here. And uh, they also have screws that can be tightened on them. Um, they do a pretty good job. Um, there are another pair of Altimas. Uh, made by the same company, Excelta. There again, you can tighten them down, uh, round nose. These do a good job. But by far, my favorite tools that I've ran into right recently is a company called Tronix. And thus, what I will call the new circle of life on my bench. Um, I am, I am, I am acquiring these tools like crazy as of recently. I absolutely love them. Um, extremely high quality. Um, you've got these adjustable, um, able to be retightened. They're hardened steel. Um, these things are just extremely well made, and I, I would call them in the category of precision tools. Now, here's the difference. Um, you can buy these for $14.95, thereabouts. This pair of snippers is going to cost you anywhere from $60 to $75, okay? Um, and you may say, wow, that's a lot of money for snippers. And for average Joe, if you only need one or two pairs of snippers, spend the money. They'll last you the rest of your lifetime. For somebody like me that spends hours and hours and hours on the bench, I'm willing to spend the money. It makes my life easier. I don't have to worry about tools breaking. I don't have to worry about getting notches in them. They perform extremely well. So I'm slowly, now look, this is not going to offset um, this, okay? Uh, there's still a use for this. It's not going to offset this, okay? There's still a use for this. But the mass majority of the other stuff I've shown you, I'm shifting my world over to this. Now, I made this decision on my own. This had nothing to do with Tronix. This had nothing to do with their endorsement of me in any way, shape, or form. This was just me making a personal decision. Now, I'm going to show you the email here. Take a look at it. As you can see here, I emailed them. I reached out to them and said, I love your product so much. Would you be willing to send me some sample units if I made a video about your product? Not because I'm a pay-to-play kind of guy or whatnot. I did it because I love the product, 
okay? I've had enough of these long enough now that I've just fallen in love and I wanted to make a video about this. So what did Tronix do? They sent me. Wow, a nice, they're gonna try to, they're gonna try to switch out all my pliers now as well, I can see here. They sent me a nice set of flat nose pliers here. I've got a pair of honestly uh, cheap Chinese knockoff brand something or another I've used to flatten wire leads. You know, when you get a component like this, and, and the, the lead on it is a little bit bent like that, you grab a plier of these and you just kind of go back and forth and you kind of turn it as you do it and the next thing you know you straighten this out. Well, now I've got a nice pair of Tronics um, I'm going to be using to flatten my wires out um, like that and uh, so I'm, I'm super excited about that. They also sent me another pair here of long nose uh, cutters, so I'm, I'm really excited about that as well. So I've got two more pair. I will say that they paid me. Um, uh, they said, hey, if you'll make a video featuring some of our products, they didn't say it had to be all about their product. They just said featuring some. Um, we'll gladly send you some samples. So, um, you know, I've got more now in the family that I've, uh, since I've added those in. But, um, you know, I'm just excited about this because, you know, some of these I picked up on eBay used, some of these I bought brand new, two of these I got from Tronix, um, but I'm just, I'm excited to get to work with these tools. When you, when you put a quality tool in your hand and you're doing work, um, you know it. Um, when you, when you put a piece of, of cheap knockoff from, you know, uh, from wherever, it doesn't, just because it's made in China doesn't mean it's bad. Uh, this one just happens to be bad, but um, you, you know it. It's not a high quality. There's a major difference here <laughs> in having those two in your hands. Now, having said all that, I've gone back. These Excelta pliers that I have, I've been inspecting them. And if you, if you look, um, interestingly, and I was going to find a direct comparison here, I think these may be made these may be made by Tronix. I could be wrong, but they got the same laser engraving. You notice the same little hole here with a with a turn screw for stop uh, to keep you from cutting too far. Got the same little rounded things on the back. Got the same little springs. Matter of fact, the the Tronics come with these little red red caps on them when you buy them. These Exceltas come with these little uh, clear caps on them when you buy them, but if you compare the two caps, they're identical. So I got a feeling this is maybe an off-brand or something uh, that they where they manufacture for other people, and maybe it's uh, maybe it's their B product. I don't know, uh, but I can tell you nothing less than top-notch right here. So I thought I'd leave from here and just show you a couple examples of where I've used Tronics tools and why I have so many different cutter heads start to give you a ex few examples of where maybe these would work where these won't. At any rate, there's my shameless plug for not something I was paid to do. If they had said, no, Mark, we won't send you something, I would have made this video anyway. I'd have still put these in a circle, and I'd have still put them a notch above all these others. It's just my it's where I'm at after years of experience and working with these, and I'm proud to have these on my bench. All right, just to demonstrate some of the use of these uh, Tronix, uh, these are cutters. This is the 7221. I like them. They've got a long handle on them. Um, you know, Tronix also makes the uh, shorter handle models here as such. But um, these are really handy for just getting in here. They're just angle cutters. Like I'm restoring this old Fisher model A20 right here. And I'm just having to uh, snap some components loose that I'm going to save and reuse. In other cases here, I'm just uh, snipping wires. This is a uh, point to point wired unit, uh, much like a lot of a lot of gear from the uh, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, but I'm just kind of cutting all these loose, and these these snippers do an amazing job at doing so. They're extremely high quality and um, extremely sharp at the same time. So I think we've gotten. Got everything cut loose with these units. Um, I just can't say enough about the quality of the metals and the thickness. And uh, this, this is high, high, high quality machining here versus um, 
would show you some examples here, but I won't show the name on this, but it's uh, these, let me see if I can move this out of the way and zoom in here. These are just some cheaper, um, look at this, they barely even open when you, you know, had to kind of pull them open. They don't work all that well. And if you'll notice here, the tips on them, when they come closed, one of the tips here is bent on one side. And it's just because they're, they're thin little, I mean, look at the difference here in, in what you're seeing. This is just some stamped metal that has been bent. This is some um, machined uh, tool steel. Just, I, I can't, night and day difference. A nice, uh, something you can adjust here, a screw and a, and a, uh, a nut on the other side. This is just kind of press riveted here on, on both sides. And like I said, these things hang all the time. They don't even open all the way. You have to kind of then finish pushing them back open here. Um, I just, I, I can't even begin to say the difference in quality here. Yes, these cost more. Yes, but they uh, they will last you for years. And, uh, you know, it's one of those where uh, tools are worth everything in this industry. Okay, another great example of where um, just about every scenario might require a slightly different type of cutting tool. So, you know, your typical um, little angle cutters here, like this pair right here, or potentially a pair with, um, you know, rounded, rounded hit nose on them up here like this. They don't do so great, like on a piece of Macintosh gear here, where you've actually got to get down underneath a component, like right here, and snip a wire, um, as you can see, that's coming up through the bottom here underneath of that. Um, and that's where something like these longer, longer nose pliers here with the angled cutting head. It reaches right underneath that component and it snips that out very well. And these are extremely high quality. Um, matter of fact, <laughs> I had a pair of uh, not the same brand, long uh, snipper tools like this, using them that way, and broke one of the tips off a few weeks ago. Um, and I've since replaced them with, with these Tronics, and I've had great success since. So just another example, this is an old Macintosh C8 amplifier here where, um, you know, a different tool for different job. And if you've got all the right tools, it makes your job much easier. So in our shootout of cutters today, I'm going to give third place here to these Exolite 175Ms. They're still great cutters. They serve their purpose. They're low cost. Um, you know, they're low cost enough to be consumable, so you ding one of them, you throw it away, okay? And and you can also try to repair them by grinding the backs off a little bit. Uh, maybe get another life or two out of them. Um, I'm going to give second place um, to these Lindstroms. They have never failed me, and they've been amazing cutters. It's the only pair I've ever had. There again, I didn't buy these new. I picked them up at a ham fest. They were new in a pack, but they didn't come from a reseller, per se. And um, I've had these for a long time, 10, 15, 20 years, and uh, I've used the heck out of them. Matter of fact, I still reach for them in certain cases where maybe they fit and something else doesn't. So second place um, goes here. I'm going to give a strong honorable mention and uh, runner-up here to these Excelta brands. I have a funky feeling, as I mentioned, that these Exceltas may be made by these guys. So I might be putting them in the up there in the number one spot but number one here hands down um just based on quality um I, I just if you put a pair of these in hand in your hand you'd know what i'm talking about and there would be no question in your mind these um surpass all of these others over here um, for their purpose so thanks for watching everybody stay tuned we'll keep bringing you great videos